Good evening, everybody. Matrix here, and here are a list of stocks that I'll be watching on October 16th. Uh, stocks that I think uh, that will be most in play and uh, basically uh, worth my time to look at and trade tomorrow. Okay, um, just a pretty short list tonight. Uh, let's go over the spy real quick. The futures right now. Let me bring that in. Uh, we are gapping down about uh, 10 points on the overnight close. And uh, currently, uh, after hours, the SPY has lost most of its gains. And it's actually um, anticipated because of this run. It's never really, the buyers never really had a chance to get tested. So sitting right here uh, currently, and uh, this is... Um, let me show you the spy. This blue line is where we're currently sitting at. Now, what I mean by the buyers never really got tested is basically um, what we're seeing probably overnight profit taking. Uh, these buyers right here from the area where we broke out around the 297 needs to get tested. Uh, I am expecting a pull in tomorrow at the open or pre market. And uh, let's see if 297 will hold. Um, perhaps 297 might be a little close as well. I mean, if the opening down move creates a lot of pressure, I do anticipate some weak hands going to panic out and uh, start selling and uh, bring it all the way back down to 296 over here, which is a clear support level. As you can see, there's a very high volume done here on October 11th on the pull down. And uh, from here, this is a high volume area. Uh, looking at the daily chart real quick, 296 is uh, basically right here overall on the daily chart. We're very overextended on the SPY. Uh, pull down back down closer to the 9 EMA is definitely possible for tomorrow, and it's what I'm looking at uh, right now. Um, whether it holds this 296, uh, we don't know yet, but this 296 created a very heavy support area, as you can see over uh, uh, the prior months. So that's what I'm looking at overall. Uh, from there, will it bounce? I really don't know. We'll just have to watch. Uh, I don't want to form any specific long or short bias on it right now. Just going to let the price action kind of dictate what I want to do for tomorrow. Now, with the stocks in play tomorrow, uh, there are basically three stocks that I'll be watching. Uh, Roku, as you can see, I already have these lines plotted out. These lines were plotted out, um, or these horizontals and resistance lines were plotted out back in here when uh, this dump day happened, right? And uh, as you can see, it respected these levels very well. Uh, I just have to change the colors from, for example, this is now currently support, and I'll just have to change it back to the green color. And um, they're, they're respecting these levels. Roku had a very strong day today. I posted um, my trade review and recap on the trade review. I will put that link below, a very detailed, um, recap on how I traded and my thoughts on um, how I traded the long side today on Roku. I basically caught it from uh, around the 125 and let it go at 128. From there, um, it just kept running without me. Now, with the stock being so strong, I'm looking for uh, a continuation gap up tomorrow in the pre-market. And uh, the next level of resistance I see is the 135 area. Uh, coming over here into the daily chart, let's map off this 135 real quick, which is right around here, right? And uh, from there, uh, after 135, we have the low of this candle on uh, September 9, uh, September 10th, okay? So the low is 139.50. So I'm going to map that off real quick, okay? So 139.50 to, it might leak past above if we are going bullish tomorrow and continue to run. Um, the stock is very overextended. It does need a pullback. Um, with a gap up, I'm anticipating like a steeper pullback. Like today on the five minute chart, you can see we did get some sort of a pullback back down to 231 and then uh, a little bit above 231 here. But personally, I think the pullback is not really uh, steep enough, to be quite honest. Uh, these buyers have really yet to be tested. And uh, I think uh, with the stock closing so strong, I think we are gapping up. So what I'm looking for is a gap up in the pre-market and then it'll probably hit this 135 area and then starts uh, selling off pre-market. And then if it stays and hovers around 135, I think this is a good area for an opening short to get short in. And um, 
you have very tight risk if it breaks through just get out right get out real quick and reassess at the opening otherwise uh if it hangs around around the 135 around the highs here uh i think it's a very good short to uh take it and uh for pull in profit short um just kind of like a scalp for a quick few points down uh, definitely watching this 131.25 and 131 area to be retested. Ideally, tomorrow, um, with the overall market conditions, if the market is going to pull in, I do expect Roku to pull in some as well. It will eventually find some sort of a base around this area, maybe uh, around the 130. Since Roku is so strong and it's looking so bullish, it did have an analyst upgrade and uh, a positive catalyst today with them announcing a partnership with uh, Apple TV Plus. So that's a big deal for Roku in their revenues to come. Um, basically, the stock has rebounded. But uh, as you can see, uh, prices up here around the 170s and the 150s is not a, a price where uh, the investors, investors really, really like. So the question is, when is this stock... Uh, shooting up so high where people will start thinking it's overvalued right um with that said very overextended looking for some sort of a pull in and base kind of like a a consolidation day tomorrow i don't expect a panic sell if you look back on a couple of days ago i did short apple at the all-time highs for like a consolidation pull in so um it's kind of typically that type of trade uh, a slow fade down into 130 and then hold a base and then if it rips from 130 i don't know but i am expecting a gap up though so a gap up uh really quick buyers um buyers coming in trapping longs uh before the big pull in and then um, probably a backup making a double top or a lower high eventually around 135 or uh anywhere around this area 137.5 and then uh, pulling in and then fade it back down. The average true range is about $8 here. And um, if it continues long from 135, if it holds above 135 and starts basing uh, at the open, um, it might attract momentum buyers to continue to buy this up. But um, with the stock coming up from <laughs> all the way to 120 to uh, 140 in two days, that's, uh, that's pretty over-exaggerated. And I would think that, I mean it's quite foolish in my personal opinion to buy the stock at this high uh, before uh, the buyers being really tested so i'm looking for a gap up uh pop and drop and then fade back down to this 130 area which is essentially the vwap today so that's my plan on roku uh if it continues to run uh, i might or might not take it from 135 depending on how long it maintains the support at 135 if it holds above 135. We do know the next area is around the 139.50, 140 area, right? So uh, let's take a look at that tomorrow. Um, next stock up, we have uh, UAL, United Airlines, announced earnings today. Uh, let me see if I loaded, saved any drawings here. Um, I didn't save any drawings here on UAL. Okay, so um, this is very in play. It's a um, very positive earnings reaction. Uh, they did an earnings beat. Um, they guided up their uh, Q4 expectations, uh, citing that their capacity is going to be up about 3%. So with airline stocks, capacity is key to their earning potential. Uh, the more airfares they receive um, that in turn is revenue right they also adjusted their um, earnings per share for uh, the year of 2019 and uh, adjusted their guidance to be up as well so that's very bullish news um, i'm not saying i'm just gonna be bullish on the stock though however uh, looking overall on this chart um the short float is only 6.6 percent so there weren't a lot of people shorting the stock and hence this pop will not cause some sort of a squeeze panic in my opinion uh we have key resistance here at the 90 level and the 91 level so uh 90 level very key and the 91 area as well the after hours highs coming into the daily chart uh i want to map off 
um, 89 here. You don't see the gap. Stock is uh, a little bit around 89 here. Um, this is the 89 is the key inflection point in my opinion. And then on this day, October 1st, we have the highs here around the 90 area. So $90 and 15 cents ish. Uh, this is a key resistance area. And then 91, maybe give it up a little bit. Okay, let's see, 91, 91, 25, that's another key resistance. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that this is a key area. Um, without a lot of shorts pile in uh, with the gap up tomorrow, I am anticipating people to pull profits and short it or, or sell it at the open to fill the gap. Uh, if it holds uh, the infliction point, it's kind of like uh, 89 bucks. So I'm gonna mark this off. Uh, as orange and the $89 mark is basically you're gonna decide, it's the deciding factor of how I wanna trade. If the stock holds above 89 bucks, it's a long and the buyers are in control. Uh, if the stock is under 89 bucks, then it's a short and the sellers are in control. With support, I see key support at $88, which is also uh, tonight's closing price. So that's gonna be key support here. And then coming down a little bit, we also have around 87.25. So this is basically a support zone. Um, with the catalyst being so good, I am anticipating um, some analysts to chime in tomorrow with some buy ratings or hold ratings or uh, overweight, overweight ratings. So this is a very good uh, earnings report. With that said, that might all change. The pre-market action is going to uh, reevaluate. Um, if the ratings coming up are bullish even at the open during the pull and after the price discovery i do expect this 88 area to hold and uh, getting long here for a swing for a couple of days on the changing fundamentals play uh, this is a very good trade in my opinion and i'll be looking for the pull in to base out around the 88 and get long um, aside from that if it gaps up even more i do anticipate some profit taking at the open for the stock to pull down real quick and uh, one might or might not take this opening uh, short here for the profit taking scalp uh, we'll have to see I don't even know if I want to take it to fill the gap right so um, the stock in itself doesn't really like gaps it tends to fill gaps first before run so um, I'm looking for a gap fill at the open okay with that said, you know what? Let me save these drawings here real quick while I marked it off. So um, key resistance and uh, we'll see what happens in the pre-market. The stock has an average true range of two bucks. So uh, from 90 to 92 or from 89 to 91 or from 88 to 90, I mean, it, it all works out on the mass side of things. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so UAL, very in play. Let me save that real quick. Definitely gonna find a nice trade here for tomorrow on UAL. And finally, we have NVDA. NVDA is kind of like um, kind of like Roku today. They did get a news catalyst, which is um, an analyst upgrade. Uh, Bank of America upgraded it. Uh, the stock has an average true range of about $5.80, so it can definitely run. Uh, as far as I can see the chart, uh, this massive pop up and pull down, we do see kind of like profit taking right now. Uh, let me see if I have drawings on this. Yes. Okay, so uh, some drawings. This blue line is the opening price. Uh, this purple line at 189.50 ish is the pre market highs or the pre market lows, which it held, like a pre market level, which it held and then uh, ran up from here. Um, I don't anticipate NVDA to lose all of its gains because it is on a positive catalyst and I am expecting um, kind of like a second day play, maybe a continuation, but with the overall market gapping down right now, uh, I think it's gonna pull in first at the open and then find some sort of a base before it slowly grinds sideways. It might take a few days for it to make another run. The stock is very overextended. Uh, with that said, after hours, we do see slight grinding up action here. So uh, the infliction point is uh, around this 197.35 area I'll be watching, right? So depending on uh, if it holds above or below 197.35 area, 
and uh, I'll take trade ideas from there. We have key resistance at 199.30, which is uh, today's high. And then the next area of resistance I see is 202.40. So 202.40 I got from last year. Let's map that off real quick. 202.40 right there. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm seeing. This 202.40 is basically uh, from last year, November 15th area. So you can see the horizontal line across this is a key resistance. And uh, with the stock being so overextended, I do anticipate some sort of pull in. Uh, on this two year daily chart, as you can see, there's a VWAP anchored here from the uh, start of the year of 2018. And we are on the two year anchored VWAP, we are actually sitting right at the VWAP here. So um, perhaps a pop and a drop uh, 200. It's also going to be key, so it might pop through a little bit because this is a psychological whole number. Although it's not a proven key level, the $100 mark psychologically is some sort of a level. I just won't uh, put so much weight on it to and say that it's going to fall from there for sure. But uh, this, I, I think the buying would stall sometime around the $200 um, pre market looking for a pop, maybe a sideways open, and then a dip and hold, and then long. Uh, this 195 area to 194 to 195 area shows a key buyers, uh, buyers area right here from uh, these massive um, volume in the morning, uh, especially the first 30 minutes. Uh, this is the highs here at the 193.90. So, uh, I, I like to see a pull in to see this area tested hard. And then if it holds, then it's a good long for a, a potential few day swing, in my opinion, on this good catalyst. Um, Bank of America gave them a price target of 255. That's overshooting it a little bit. Uh, we'll see. So this is um, the third stock that I'll be watching. And finally, uh, Facebook, I'll be watching. Facebook, um, with the overall market situation, we'll see. Uh, this 190 is a very key resistance area, even on the intraday and on the daily chart. So a little around uh, 190 to 191 area. Uh, it ran a lot today. The, the buyers have yet to be tested on this push up. So uh, I do um, wanna see a pop and drop, some sort of a double top maybe on Facebook. Um, this is going to be more on the side watch for me uh, just because UAL and Roku are so much in play and NVDA as well. I don't think I'll be able to trade four stocks at the same time, let alone maybe three. So uh, we'll just have to uh, gauge the pre-market action from there. Um, that's basically my watch list this evening. I know I haven't been posting for a long while. I've been uh, really busy on my own personal side of things. And uh yeah, uh, check out the video link description below where I will put in a trader view recap of how I traded Roku today, including all the details, how I longed it, all my entry price and exit prices, uh, all my thoughts and thinking behind the recap will be there. Um, and make sure you hit the like button on this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'll see you guys all bright and early tomorrow. Ciao.